If you're looking to really save some money this week, then this is the video for you. Welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we are cooking with one single bag of pinto beans, and yes, there's gonna be other ingredients, but this is gonna be our main course, our soup du jour today. We're gonna to cook up this entire pound bag, and I'm gonna end up making three family meals with it. We have to start off by rinsing our pinto beans because otherwise we get major trouble from the bean juice. Be careful, we're gonna be looking for any pebbles. I've never found a pebble. Maybe I'm not a good looker. I've also never bit into a pebble eating beans, but I guess all it takes is one bad time, right? One moment where you break a tooth, you'll never forget. Yeah, so we're just gonna rinse these off and we're gonna get them started in the Instant Pot. I will put a recipe down below in order to cook them just in a regular, um, in a regular pot, but I'm gonna do it quick tonight and instant pot it is. So this recipe just says the beans. And then I'm gonna pour in three cups of water or you can use vegetable broth. And I happen to have the better than bouillon vegetable. So I'm just gonna use three teaspoons of that. This guy is like my favorite little spatula. I use it all the time. I think I've mentioned many times before. I always put a link to it down in the description box. They usually come in like a larger package, but totally worth it because there's so many times where you need to get something small out of something like this and you don't wanna waste, right? So that helps to save money in the long run by not wasting. We're gonna manually cook these for 35 minutes. And then we will natural release for 15 minutes once it's done. So it's been about 15 minutes after um, on natural release. The pinto beans, you can see they're getting a little, it's a little steamy up in here. They're cooked perfectly. So these are gonna be great for all three of our meals. I'm really excited. We'll get these actually going into the burgers right away. And then uh, I'm gonna cook the chili today and as well as like almost like a taco filling and we're gonna have those through the week, but I'm just cooking them ahead. So now that our beans are done, I am gonna get started on our first meal, which is a pinto bean burger. I am actually gonna make all three of these in one day and store some of them for later in the week. So for the pinto bean burgers, we need a half a cup of diced onion. And as much as I usually don't care about how much onion I use, when you're making like a veggie burger like this, you do wanna be a little careful about that because otherwise you're just gonna get a burger that's all onion. You just need the ratio to be correct. So I'm guessing that's going to be about one of these halves of this small to medium onion. And as much as I love onion, I am going to dice it really, really small because I don't want huge chunks of onion in a veggie burger like this. And hey, I actually used a cloth underneath my cutting board this time. It's not sliding everywhere for your viewing pleasure. So make sure to give this video a like if you're pleased that I remembered to do that. And even if you aren't, you know, thumbs up. Okay, we're gonna combine all of our ingredients into a bowl to make the burgers. So we have a half a cup of our diced onion, a half a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm using panko, um, but I think you could use regular too. We'll see, I think it'll turn out fine. About a quarter cup of chopped cilantro. I had this left over from something, so I don't wanna waste it. It does have some scallions in it, but that's fine because scallions are delicious. I know it's gonna taste good in this. We're gonna use two tablespoons of sour cream. Yeah. Yep. Hi. Hi. Julian says hi. And look at my paper airplane. Watch oh, this. <laughs> Made an awesome paper airplane. One teaspoon of hot sauce. I'm just gonna use Cholula here. One half a teaspoon of ground cumin an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and one large egg. Because I have the egg in here, I don't really want to use a whisk, but I do want to use a fork to kind of get everything really well mixed. And I feel like a fork is sometimes a good alternative to a whisk when you don't want everything to get stuck in there. I got a fork. Can I help? Are you gonna pour corn in it? I am. We're gonna try and mash the corn down. So the recipe actually calls for about eight ounces of corn and I have a 15 ounce, so I'm gonna do about half. Mash the corn. Mash the corn. 
So what I did was I put the cooked pinto beans kind of in this can so that I know the right amount of pinto beans to use. We're just gonna try and mash these up a little bit. And I might need to wait a few minutes because they're still really hot. We're gonna make them into four patties and then I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. Okay, I hope these stay together. They seem a little wet for my like, but then again, I guess I could add extra breadcrumbs. I don't know. I'm banking on them staying together once I cook them. And we'll know if I didn't trust my gut and add the extra breadcrumbs, then that's what I should have done. All right, off to the refrigerator for 10 minutes. So I've heated some oil in the pan here over, this is a medium low heat. You can probably go medium on your pan depending on what type of pans you have. And these really did solidify in the refrigerator. So I'm happy about that. So I'm just gonna place them on. I'm hoping they're gonna sizzle a little bit and we're gonna cook them for about four minutes on each side. I'm gonna give flipping these a shot now. It's been about four minutes. Ooh, look at that, it looks good. I'm excited. That was everything I was hoping for in kind of like a crust on these. And I know that three of us will have some cheese on ours. I just like that. And comment below if you know who is gonna not have cheese. So I just end up putting the cover on so that it can melt. So I just cooked up some super fast air fryer, um, like potatoes to go on the side. I had made baked potatoes a few days ago. My tip is always to make extra baked potatoes so that you can do something like this. It makes it super easy the night of. I just sliced them up, threw them in the air fryer for like 10 minutes with olive oil and um, some of the Auntie Nono's grilling seasoning and they're delicious. I'm just gonna have my burger with a little bit of mayonnaise. I have some um, Cholula and some lettuce. The, the original recipe actually has like a chipotle sauce. I didn't make that because I knew no one in my family would really care <laughs> for that. Um, but I will put that recipe down in the description box so that you can see it if you want to make that sauce. I always like to do like a mayonnaise whipped up with some sriracha too. That's also really good. These burgers were absolutely fantastic. Julian loved his, ate the entire thing. And they're not, like veggie burgers are never going to taste exactly like a regular burger but the key is that they're flavorful they're delicious and that's what this was so i would make these again and again and i actually felt you know kind of healthy having something like this it was really great the next recipe is for a pinto bean and butternut squash chili this is absolutely delicious okay we're gonna start on our chili while those are refrigerating and just chop up about a cup and a half of onions but i have the other half of this onion from the burgers and then I have this large onion. I'm just gonna chop it all up because in a chili, onion is delicious. And then one about two and a half cups of red bell pepper. I just have this single bell pepper. I'm gonna cut up the whole thing. I love chili. It's just extremely forgiving. <laughs> a forgiving meal. I have many times made chili without peppers when it called for peppers. And we're also gonna want one minced clove of garlic. As always, if you don't have fresh garlic or onion, you can always use onion powder and garlic powder and it will be still very good. The fresh stuff is very inexpensive and it does add a lot, um, but the I understand if you just have dried on hand, go for it. I'm just gonna add our little bit of oil to the pan. I need to buy more oil our onions and peppers. And then once those are cooked down, maybe about five minutes, we're gonna add in the garlic. So I almost forgot, the original recipe does not call for ground beef or turkey. It's just like a vegetarian chili, but I had this um, tube of ground turkey and I wanted to cook it up in this, give it some extra protein. So we'll just add that right now. All right, we're gonna add our garlic now. Just cook that for a minute. You could drain this, but I'm not too worried about it with everything we're putting in here. It's not super fatty or anything. So I am actually out of chili powder. So this is gonna be kind of a taco flavored chili, which hopefully is okay. So this is what I have, taco seasoning. So hope for the best with this. I have pre-cut up butternut squash, but you could totally just buy one and dice it. 
I want a couple of cups. This is probably a little more than that, but hey, too many vegetables is never a bad thing. And you want three cups of the pinto beans. I'm actually gonna cut it down to two because I added that ground turkey and I have lots of butternut squash and I'm just worried there's not gonna be enough for the third recipe for the pinto beans. So whatever you have, you can always do like a can of black beans too. I've got one drained can of corn. You can always use frozen. One can of diced tomatoes. I think the recipe actually calls for crushed, but I just didn't have that. If I had had my favorite fire roasted, I would have used those, but I just had regular dice today, so I think it'll be fine. And then one can of diced green chilies. You don't want to include the cover, and you don't want to drain those. The, um, the the sauce is actually, or the juice is actually going to give it flavor, but look at that color on there. I like it. I'm excited about this. This is going to be a healthy, delicious meal. So technically, the recipe that I'm using is for a crock pot. So it says to cook it on low for eight hours. I'm not gonna be doing that. Uh, I just wanted to get this done tonight. So I'm just gonna cook it until it tastes good and my butternut squash is cooked all the way through. So just gonna kind of let it simmer on uh, medium low for a while here and I will let you know at the end exactly how long it actually took. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. The butternut squash is fully cooked through. The flavor is really good. Just wanna test that on this. And I will put the original recipe down below in the description box for you so that you can see the um, like the actual chili and cumin proportions if you have chili on hand. But just know that if you're ever making chili and you don't have it, you can always use a little bit of an envelope of taco seasoning and a little bit goes a long way. It's not gonna give it the exact um, same flavor as the chili, uh, but it will definitely give it a similar flavor and you just have to know that it's kind of like a taco rendition of chili. It's still quite good. We ended up having this as lunches for the week, but it did end up making about eight servings. So you're getting a ton of food kind of utilizing these pinto beans. And like I've said many times with this, you can switch things in and out. You can really make something happen out of nothing, whatever you have in your pantry. This next one is a cheesy pinto bean and chicken skillet. And this is a great way to really stretch some chicken. You could also use canned chicken in this. This is a great option or really any other protein that you're trying to use up. Go ahead and fill it in and it's gonna be great. Okay, we're avoiding extra dishes. So I did not wash this. I just cooked the burgers on it and kind of wiped it out. It's fine. We just cooked on it. So it's not gonna be a problem. We're cooking with very similar um, flavors too. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna add in the rest of my pinto beans. But if you wanted to use cans, you could just use two cans of drained and rinsed pinto beans. Then obviously you could make your own, but I bought some pico de gallo and this is about two cups, which is what you want to put in here. This is going to give it most of its flavor. And then I think the recipe said like three cups of chicken, but I have probably maybe two here and that's what we're going to use. And this is like a three ingredient thing. We're going to add some cheese to it at the end. So I guess it's four, but the original recipe says that you can make tacos with this, which I think would be a really delicious thing. But what I did was I actually, over here to the side, cooked up some brown rice. And we're gonna serve ours with brown rice and it would kind of end up being like a little burrito bowl. So you can add sour cream, cilantro, avocado, guacamole. They actually recommend serving it with a few slices of lime. That would be really good too. Sliced radishes whatever you want make it your own so you're just going to heat heat this all the way through and then i'm going to take the sprinkle sprinkle the cheese we're using monterey jack right over the top i'm just gonna cover this up in that monterey jack it feels like a lot of cheese but you know what not mad so i'm going to take this off the heat and it's going to be delicious so I ended up serving this the next night for dinner and it was absolutely delicious. If you have like sour cream, cilantro, you can serve any of those things with this, maybe some avocado, extra salsa, hot sauce if you want, cheese. I mean, it's pretty cheesy as it is, but it was absolutely delicious. Kind of like a burrito bowl, but a little different. I wanna thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this and got some great ideas for your family. Go ahead and click on this next video if you want some more budget meals. And remember the next time you're on YouTube, make sure you're watching Meals with Maria.
Who's coming? Who's coming? <laughs>